damn, this thing is heavy. What did you guys think of that new uh, that new song? Some classic rock. Woo, it's bright. Um, anyway, so this week's vlog is going to be pretty sick. Basically, what we're going to be doing for the main part of this is going to Juncture Tap Room over in Santa Rosa. It's right at... Uh, Mission in Montgomery, I think it is. Super cool spot. Um, the guy that owns it, Peter Lopez, is like literally the nicest guy you'll ever meet in your life. He's one of those dudes to where like, you know when you meet somebody and you're like, wow, this guy is just super cool. They got it going on. They're just a good person. Like, I wish the world had more people like this. That's Peter. He's just awesome dude. Used to do a lot of stuff for the press Democrat, the beer and wine industry. He's been involved with it for a long time. Um, we're gonna go this way. Somebody's weird over there. Um, anyway, we'll come back. Anyway, super cool dude, um, and he is gonna invite us over there. He's gonna give us a tour of Juncture, all that he's done, talk a little bit about it, talk a little bit about himself. Um, you guys are really gonna like it. It's freaking awesome, so stay tuned. Boom. What up? Dudes and dudettes. I uh, wonder how I look, I can't see myself right now. Where are we at? Where are we at, Spring Lake? Yeah. Howarth Park? It's so weird when you're holding this big ass camera and you're taking a video of yourself because people are just looking at you like, who is this dude and what is he doing with this big ass camera setup? If I had my phone out right now, this is the stupid part. I can't keep this thing still. It's like a workout holding it. If I had my phone out right now, this is the problem. This is the truth, Grant. If you have your phone out and you're taking selfies or Snapchats or Instagram things, people are just like, oh yeah, totally normal. When you have this big ass Canon camera with a mic hanging off the side on a gimbal, they're like, what is going on? They think you're shooting like the next Fast and Furious movie. Or not. We're just shooting the Brad Wilkinson Realtor vlog. Basically the same kind of content though. Pretty much. Oh, now look at me go. The Phantom, what is it, Grant? 3 Pro. Phantom 3 Pro. Look at this little guy, he's like a kid in the candy shop. Oh my god. Let it rip. <laughs> This is a money frog. Today's learning segment, we're gonna teach you how to make money hopped to you. Ah, uh, you get it? Hop, money, frog. Pretty good, I thought. Anyway, here we go. Ready? Da -da 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 -da. Boom. How to start investing in real estate, that is. First thing you have to do, obviously, buy something, okay? Quit throwing money away on rent, quit sitting there and, and not having your money be working for you, okay? Saving is, is, it's kind of hard because saving has always been like the way of what you do with money, right? Everybody always tells you, save your money, save your money, save your money. Saving your money is good, but you wanna save your money and then invest your money. Save your money, invest your money, save your money, invest your money. Because if you just save your money for your entire life and it just sits in a savings account, we're gonna get down here in a second, but you're actually losing money due to inflation. Once you buy something, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna stay there for a short period of time because what you can do is you can buy things with a first time homeowner loan, FHA loan, conventional loan, a very small amount of money down. Go back to vlog 02 and you'll see the, the exact numbers. Use that, start building equity by purchasing a property, okay? You're putting money in, paying your mortgage every month and that money is going into paying off your principal and your interest, but you're building equity, okay? Then what we're gonna do is after we get some equity built up, you're gonna use that equity, you're gonna pull it out of that property, either in the form of a line of credit, refinancing, something like that, and you're gonna go and you're gonna purchase another property or exchange it out for a better property, okay? Through the form of, if it's not your primary residence, through the form of a 1031 exchange, which we're gonna talk about in a tax, a tax segment video that we're gonna have coming up probably next week or the week after. Um, or you're gonna take it out and like I said, you're just gonna go buy another property, right? So now instead of having one property, you're taking the money out that you've put in that first property, you go and you buy another one, put a tenant or make that first property that you had a rental, you go live in the next one, and you continue to do this and do this and do this and do this, right? Think about this, if you could start when you're 30 years old and you bought a house every other year, by the time you're 60, you're gonna have 15 homes. Then the last step is you become hell of rich. Super simple, right? I just did that in there because I wanted to say hell of, not hell of, but hell of rich. I'll get you guys going. Real estate is like any other investment. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. But over the course of 20, 30, 40 years I'm talking about, 
it always goes up, right? Everybody that's watching this video knows somebody or you might even be somebody that says, oh man, I bought this house in Sebastopol back in 1974 for 86,000. Man, I wish I kept that house. Man, I wish I didn't sell that house that I bought in San Francisco. I bought a condo in San Francisco when I was 18 for 32,000. Now it's worth 2.1. You hear people talk about that all the time. I shouldn't have sold, I shouldn't have sold. The reason they're saying that is simply because of this, is because of the long-term appreciation that happens which goes back to the point that I brought up in the middle. You don't want to wait to buy real estate. You want to buy real estate and then you want to wait. Whew, that was a lot. My last thing here for you guys, and this is a, pl a plug-in, it's not sponsored, it's not anything like that. It's just simply, let me get my water out of the way. Simply something that I listen to. Um, shout out to Dylan Mathias. He actually got me hooked on this. Um, it's a podcast. It's called Bigger Pockets Podcast, okay? And what they do is they basically take these things that I'm talking about and they give you real life scenarios. They give you number, they give you stories, they talk about it. And me being in real estate and having mentors that do this kind of stuff that are teaching me, I already knew a little bit about this. This podcast takes it and puts it on steroids. I mean, it is honestly the best podcast I've ever listened to when it comes to the easiness of learning and investing the financial side of real estate, all the options, you hear all these stories. It's just, it's awesome. Okay. So what I always tell people is like, rather than listening to music, every time you're driving around, just put this on and just let one segment play out. Just listen to one a week. The amount of knowledge and things you're going to learn and ideas you're going to pick up are going to be just, it's going to pay you a million times over in the course of your life. So check out bigger pockets podcast. Ask me any questions that you guys have. Um, comment below if you guys have any other questions. But anyway, hope you guys like that. And we got some other cool stuff coming up for you in the vlog. Hey, I'm uh, Peter Lopez Jr., the uh, owner here at Juncture Taproom and Lounge. I just want to say thank you uh, to everybody that's uh, supported us and uh, helped us celebrate uh, a year now um, uh, in May. We're well over a year. Uh, this place wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the support of family, friends, and really you, the clientele. Uh, we're nothing without you. Um, I do want to point out that we had one heck of a year. Um, just a few months after opening, um, we had you know the the worst fires that that this uh, county's ever seen. Uh, we lost power here. Uh, we were without power for a week. Uh, that month uh, was very very difficult. And again, it was everybody here in the community supporting us and encouraging us uh, to continue going forward. Um, some of you might also know that uh, when I opened this place, it was Confluence Taproom and Lounge. Uh, there was a trademark issue. So uh, I had to change the name to Juncture. Um, Confluence Brewing in Des Moines, Iowa was kind enough to give me enough time to uh, be able to do the name change at the one year anniversary, which I thought would be a little less confusing. But um, it was one heck of a year. And again, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, small business owners will tell you that you don't rebound from one of those two things and we rebounded from both. And uh, I just want you guys to come on in and anybody that hasn't been here, I wanna show you why this place is special to me and, uh, and my family, it's a family owned and operated business. So I'm gonna show you guys around and uh, you know, for those of you that have been here, please tell your friends, bring them in. Uh, those of you that haven't, then uh, this will be your first look. Okay, so uh, Juncture Taproom and Lounge, uh, for me this is a place where uh, my knowledge of beer, wine, uh, come together under one roof. Um, this is a, a labor of love uh, for sure. I've been working in the beer and the wine industry since I was 19. I'm now 38, so that's literally half my life. Um, what I really love about this, uh, I've always said it's not always what you do, but who you do it with. So just uh, looking over at this barrel right here, uh, literally my, my high school art teacher, um, she, she, uh, she did that for me uh, when we opened, that was a gift. Um, this is bar and pretty much all the construction done in here. Um, it's uh, AE Contracting, my friend Armando Esparza and his, uh, his partners Miguel and Jose. They did, this, they did all this work and uh, Armando's been a friend of mine since uh, he was 12 and I was 14, so you know, well over 20 years. Everywhere you look, uh, for me it's, uh, you know, it's family, it's friends. Uh, you look at these lights right here, my cousin Oscar and I, we put those together. We uh, cut down some wood staves and uh, use the mason jar. Um, you know, these tables, like literally, you know, made by hand here. Uh, you know, I had my aunt do these uh, curtains. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, the theater, so that's why, you know, um, I had this huge wall. I was trying to figure out what to, you know, what to fill this space with. So I figured I'd, I'd go with the, you know, high def projector for, uh, for the games. And then um, I brought in the curtains to kind of give it that theater look. Um, yeah, everywhere you look, uh, these uh, keg collars, uh, also a big fan of music. So when you look at these keg collars from afar, a lot of times people think that they're 45s, and I purposely wanted this to look like a, a music producer's wall. 
So if you were to walk into a music producer's wall, you would see all the records. So that's the look I was going for, but literally every single one of these keg callers uh, tells a story. There are times where an owner or a head brewer of a, of a brewery like Seismic will come in and they'll point out that that was their very first batch of beer that they ever made. Um, this one here, Petaluma Hills, uh, which is no longer around unfortunately, they made this beer, uh, it was a collaboration with uh, Hop Labs Brewing and uh, this beer was made in honor of the birth of uh, my second daughter. It was called uh, Baby on the Way IPA. So literally everywhere you look, there's a, a NorCal Beer Geeks IPA, which uh, we blew this up over here if you want to follow me this way. So Factions of Brewery in uh, Alameda, um, they do this, uh, um, this beer called uh, the NorCal Beer Geeks IPA uh, that we release annually at a uh, beer, festival, beer festival that I'm one of the organizers at. Um, so it's a fundraiser for Sonoma County Vet Connect, the Veterans Helping Veterans Group, and I'm grateful to Faction for doing that collaboration. And this mural was done by, um, uh, again, an, a longtime friend of mine named James Gomez. Um, I, you know, I asked him for a cartoon version. I wanted it to be a map of Sonoma County through a, a beer geek's eyes. He literally went above and beyond like <laughs> what I expected from him, and uh, he just he went really super into detail. So all that iconic stuff that was over there. Um, it was put onto this map as well, so you'll see uh, like Snoopy taken off uh, from the airport there. You'll uh, if you you know if you pan over and look at uh, Bodega Bay, that's uh, you know Alfred Hitchcock, you know the, the schoolhouse there, all the birds. Um, so and then you come back this way. If you kind of want to get away from it and have you know a conversation, just you know whether it's a business meeting or or whatever it might be, and you just don't want all the noise. It's kind of nice. This lounge area allows you to kind of get away from it. You feel like you're, you know, in a completely different space. Um, during the winter time, this fireplace goes on, and this this uh, room is just really cozy and comfortable. We do have a um, small, you know, small but cozy little patio area. You want to come out, get some fresh air. Um, you know, definitely come out here. Just kind of get away from it, even uh, one step more. Okay, so you look at these initials here. These are all initials of. Uh, you know, my daughters, um, you know, uh, partners and, and friends that were a part of making this happen. Um, their, their daughters, their kids initials as well, sons and daughters. So again, uh, so you look at the food menu there. It's a, it's a simple but tasty food menu for sure. We did put a lot of thought into it. Um, my desire was to own a tap room, not a restaurant, but uh, if you're gonna do food, I think that you need to just make sure that, that it's tasty and it's, uh, it, you know, it's consistent. Uh, we do have a lot of regulars that are literally just coming back for the food now. Um, the reason that I'm pointing out the menu right now is because um, I named um, all the, everything on there. I named it after somebody or something. So the Steve, uh, the Steve is a longtime uh, friend of mine, uh, a, a supporter, um, you know, of uh, the NorCal Beer Geeks, which if uh, I hadn't already mentioned uh, before, I was actually uh, the, the co-founder of that. We started the NorCal Beer Geeks back in 2012. Started as a simple Facebook uh, group on, uh, you know, on Facebook. Um, it was just uh, 12 like-minded uh, beer geeks that wanted to share information about festivals, new tap rooms, limited release beer. It uh, grew to 100. We thought that was a big deal. Um, so we had a uh, food and beer pairing. Grew to 200. We did it again. When we got to 500, I had just come off of uh, being uh, an organizer for uh, the Ready to Grow Beer Festival. And uh, at that point, we figured, hey, let's just throw a festival. We have 500 members, maybe. 500 people will show up, 700 people showed up. <laughs> so the group just uh, continued to grow. We're now, keep in mind that it's a closed group. Uh, so the only way to get in is to be uh, invited in or to be, uh, you, or you request and you're accepted. We're at about 1,800 members now. And this started as a very simple group of just you know 12 like-minded people.